you have seen Ben Tick's latest video, in which in the last part of the video, he showed this particular effect where all the portions of a frame, of a polarized frame, are in the picture and then all of them are moving one after the other and then coming towards the camera. And that is done totally in After Effects. I have tried this effect a lot of times in Final Cut Pro or in Premiere Pro. Yes, you can use the corner pin in Premiere Pro. Yes, you can distort the image in Final Cut Pro, but the entire result is not accurate in either of the cases. The only way to do this particular thing is by After Effects. So in this particular video, I have showed this effect only in After Effects. I am so sorry I couldn't show this effect in Premiere Pro or in Final Cut Pro but it is not possible in either of the two softwares. And also, it is because you need to turn the layers of the Polaroids as 3D. And that is something that is pretty important. So I divided the tutorial into two portions, which is how to make this particular effect where all the frames are moving one after the other towards the frame, like this one. And the other one is how we use the camera motion to just zoom in into the Polaroid images and then zoom in and then move from one Polaroid image to the other Polaroid image. So that is something which is pretty important and that can be done in two ways. One by simply scaling and keyframing and the second one by using a camera. Now if I use a camera, it is a bit more complicated. So I am going to show this effect only by scaling and zooming which is much more easier to understand. So that is pretty much it. I have divided this effect into two parts and the whole part is shown in this particular tutorial. So enjoy watching this tutorial and learn from this effect and do follow Ben TK, he is pretty awesome and do subscribe to my channel also to get much more content like this. With that being said, what's up guys, Pistol Sammy here, welcome to my newest video. I hope you guys are having a great day. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in After Effects. So as you can see, the Polaroid image is in a different layer and this is the background layer. So first, what we are going to do is we are going to turn this image 3D. In order to turn this image 3D, click on the cube button which is there on that panel right here. Just click on that. And then you will see three axes present in that particular image, the X, Y and Z. Now I am going to just reposition it on the corner side just for example. And then here we are going to see X rotation y rotation, z rotation. Now I'm going to rotate it in the z axis to give it a little bit tilt. Like this. Now go to the effects panel, type in shadow. Drag the drop shadow onto the main polarite clip. Go to the effects. Go to drop shadow. Increase the distance just like this. As you can see, you can already see the shadow. Now increase the softness of the shadow. Now increase the opacity. The more the better, the more the effect will look more 3D. Now as I have taken the background image from Google Images, so it is looking a little bit unrealistic. But if you click the background on your own, it will be much more seamless and it will blend in much more better. As I have just taken it from Google Images, that is the reason it is not blending in so much. Now what you are going to do is, we are going to set a keyframe to the position, to the X and Y rotation. And then go few frames later, just a few frames, maybe 5 or 6 frames. And change the Z position to such a way that the image looks like it is going out of the screen. Just like this. And then go to the Y rotation and change the Y rotation to something like this so that it gives the rotating effect as and when it is moving. And do the same thing for the S rotation as well. After giving some X and Y rotation, this is the effect. Now if you want, you can ease out and ease in all the keyframes if you want, but that is totally up to you. I'm going to just reposition the Polaroid frame because it looks a little bit too closer to the edge. So this is the effect, this is how we do the effect. Now what you are going to do is you are going to add a little bit of motion blur onto this clip. So just click on the motion blur which is there on the layer panel. If that is not enough. Yes, this is totally not enough. So go to the effects panel, type in blur. Drag the direction blur onto the clip. Now go to the first frame. Go to the effects. Directional blur. Set a keyframe to the blur length. And then go few frames later. Like around this when the frame is visible in the frame. Increase the blur length to whatever you feel like. 
and then change the blur length to that position where the other keyframes are ending. Now we'll get a more seamless kind of effect. Now if you want to increase the blur length, it is up to you and if you want to try some other kind of blurs, it is also up to you. So that is done. I'm going to show it and with another clip just in a different kind of a way. So just copy in this clip once. And yes, just for tutorial purpose, I've used only two Polaroid images in After Effects, but I'll get more Polaroid images with more pictures rather than only one picture and then scatter them one after the other in various parts of the frame. But just for example purpose, I'm showing only two frames because otherwise it will be a pretty long tutorial. So in this particular copy clip, first I'm going to reset the position and I'm going to reset the directional blur as well. Maybe the drop shadow should be there. I'm going to reset all the keyframes of the position here. So I'm going to reset all the values as I have just copied the clip. So all the keyframes are also copied. So it is now a normal stagnant layer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just set a little bit of Z rotation to this. And set a keyframe to the position and X and Y rotation just as before. And then go few frames later. Change the Z to such a position that it covers the entire frame. Like the Polaroid frame should cover the entire video frame. Just like this, keep on increasing it in such a way, just like this. Just around here. And then increase the X and Y rotation as well to increase some rotation and give it some rotation in the whole movement. Just like this. And one more right around here. So then you are going to see this particular effect. So as you can see it is stagnant right here. But I am going to just set a little bit of opacity so that the transition is a little bit seamless. First I am going to add the directional blur just as before, just as the previous clip. So you can do it on your own, you have learned it on your own how to do that. So after adding the directional blur, I am going to pre-compose this particular clip. Decomposing is similar to like compounding of clips, just in a different kind of a way. So I'm going to pre-compose this, right click, pre-compose. And then make sure this is it and click on OK. And then you will see this. And then at that particular position where the frame is covered in the entire frame, like the polar frame is covered in the entire frame, just trim the clip to that particular portion. Right around here, you need to trim the clip to this particular portion. And then just import another clip. So this is a sample drone clip. So I'm going to just use it as an example here. So as you can see, it is a little bit not seamless. So we are going to make it a little bit seamless for this particular effect. So for this particular effect to be seamless, we are going to add a keyframe to the opacity. So just go to the last frame and set a keyframe to the opacity go to a next frame maybe two frames later and set a keyframe again and set it to zero as I feel that the transition is a little bit longer like the stagnant lip is stagnant for a little bit of longer time so I'm going to just drag the opacity keyframe on the left hand side because you know this particular clip, this particular frozen clip is a lot in duration like it, it is a lot so for that particular purpose, I'm going to just reset the keyframes on the left hand side. I'm going to move the clip on the left hand side. So now it is much more seamless. Now just let it render. Now if you play it back, it looks much more seamless than the previous one. So make sure this particular stagnant clip is not there for a longer duration. And that is pretty much it. That goes the first portion, that goes the first editing tutorial the first part where the moving clips or the moving polarizers are shown now i want to show the second part where i want to just show how to just edit this in such a way that it is zooming in into that particular frames and then moving it to the other frame now for that thing to occur first we will need a null layer so go to layer click on null object and this will appear just drag it on the top now what you need to do is you need to parent all of the three layers to the null layer. Just drag the parenting curl onto the null layer just like this and then it will automatically parent them. Now what happens, whatever you do to the null layer will automatically be affected to the entire frame. Now set a keyframe to the position and the scale. 
but before that we are going to change the keyframes to this particular uh, polaroid images because they are moving and when you are moving you cannot just zoom in to show that particular effect which bntk used so we are going to just remove the keyframes or move it on the right hand side and i will just uh, remove the direction blur now set a keyframe to the position and the scale go few frames later Increase the scale to around whatever you feel like, just make sure it covers the frame and covers the polaroid. So there goes one part. Now go like two frames later, set a keyframe again to make sure it looks stamped in there for a little bit longer. Now go a little bit on the right hand side just like this, maybe a few frames later and then change the keyframe to the next particular polaroid image and you need to do this particular thing with as many polaroids, with as many images which you take and the more you take the better this effect will look and just make sure to ease in and ease out this particular effect at the end so that it looks a little bit more seamless. So this will take a little bit longer time to find the particular image. And you can do it in camera also by using the camera in the layer but that is a little bit complex so I am keeping that for the next tutorial. Now this is done. So that is pretty much done. As it is a little bit slower I am going to just move the keyframe to the left hand side. It is a little bit faster now but it looks a little bit more better. Now what you can do is you can just play with the speed graph right here and you can make a curve kind of a graph by dragging these particular points and make sure the curve looks like this like there should be a curve between all the keyframes which means that it will be much more seamless. So make sure you get the curve right and it will vary from each and every images for each and every image and polaroid which you take. So I cannot say anything much about this particular thing. Just make sure at the end of the clip, this particular thing looks like this, which means that each and every point should have at least one curve. That will make the effect a lot more seamless. And that is pretty much it. That is the effect. Normal keyframing and zooming is simple. The main portion of this particular clip was how those polarized move in 3D and just cover the frame. This particular zoom in thing is pretty easy to understand and it can be also done in Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro if you want to and that is up to you if you want to do the zoom in, in and zoom in out effect in any other software. But that is pretty much it for today's tutorial. Thank you so much and if you like this kind of content too make sure to subscribe to my channel. With that being said, thank you.